we got to get some housekeeping uh, rules out the way, okay? I grew up Southern Baptist in a Baptist church. And not only that, I grew up in a predominantly black Baptist church, okay? So I want to let y'all know how this has to go. So the first thing, because I grew up with a lot of Baptist preachers, leaders, and speakers. So I kind of have that in my DNA. So the first thing, so you kind of understand about growing up in a Baptist church is that um, I'm probably going to close two or three times before I actually close, okay? That's number one. Number two, I'm probably going to tell you to look to your neighbor and we're going to talk back to each other. You talk to me, I'll talk back to you, okay? That's number two. Number three, uh, you see right here, I have my towel. Sometimes I don't understand why preachers have towels. They don't sweat, but I have my towel. And, um, number, number four, this is, very, this is very, 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 very important. Usually, when I know I'm about to close, I'll get two or three amens, and then that lets me know I'm doing pretty good, and I can go ahead and wrap it up. Okay, no one, see, I got one amen over here. I got one amen over here, so it lets me know that, hey, you're welcome to any of my Baptist churches, okay? Because you understand the rules. I appreciate everyone here. Let me, let me get down to... Uh, it's so funny because usually I get two or three amen, so I'm down to one, so I'm doing pretty good. So what I want to talk about today is how eight inches can change your life. Eight inches, hey man, get your mind out the gutter. I see you right now. How eight inches can change your life. I played football. I played high school football, and I was fortunate enough to play college football. Man, I'm going to tell you one of the greatest things about playing football was playing in Tullahoma right here. And I must say while I'm up here with a little time, this is not part of my notes, but it's also good to be here in the hometown of the state champion Tullahoma Wildcats. Well, I, I kind of feel bitter about that, you know, kind of give or take, even though Coach John I was like a father a figure uh, of mine. But growing up here in Tullahoma, there's nothing, not even here in Tullahoma. Also, anywhere in a southern part of the United States of America, I think y'all can agree that football is religion. It is religion. So growing up in Tullahoma, the town would come out for all the games, I mean, for every game, five, 10,000 people. The, on, the ongoing joke was, if you wanted to rob a bank, rob it on Friday in Tullahoma. Because everybody was at the football game. I don't care where you are from, where you live, if, what uh, religious you were, a religion you were, if you're a Democrat, Republican, it doesn't matter. In Tullahoma, Friday night football was where you wanted to be. Would y'all not agree? Okay, I see that y'all paid attention. I talk to y'all, y'all talk back to me. Y'all are okay with me. So, growing up, as I was playing, I'm going to tell you, I've got to play with some of the most dynamic teammates I've ever played with. I played with some, uh, some people who won Mr. Football. Mr. Football, for some of y'all who don't know, that's the Heisman Trophy of high school. I played with some All-Americans in high school. I played with some people who were all state. I even got to play with some people who went on to play professional sports. I'm telling you, I truly love playing high school football for Tullahoma. But my senior year was probably, out of my 30 plus years of living, was probably the greatest time of my life. Going into my junior year, into my senior year, the coaches came up to me and said, hey, you're going to be uh, one of our captains, one of our leaders, and you have a couple of college, uh, colleges who are interested in you. So I'm like, okay. So that summer, I mean, I worked two to three to four hours a day because I'm going to be honest with you, as much as I love Tullahoma, I wanted to get out of Tullahoma. Hey, don't judge me, uh, but I wanted to get out of Tullahoma. And especially when I realized that colleges really wanted little old me because just a couple of years ago, I would have never thought that I could go play college football. So, I mean, I trained, I trained, and trained, and I'm coming into my senior year. As I'm coming into my senior year, I mean, I'm losing weight, I'm bulking up, I'm feeling good about myself, 
and the first game was against Franklin County, our bitter rivals. I had some family members on Franklin County, so it meant a little bit more to me to play Franklin County. As we play uh, against Franklin County, I'm telling you, it was a game of my life. Had over 200 plus yards, two or three touchdowns, and after the game, something happened to me that's never happened before. Newspapers come rushing up to me. I have fans ask me for my autograph. People tell me how good, uh, how good the game was. I'm telling you, the se my senior season was going awesome. Second game, we blow out Spring Hill. Third game, we're just continuing to blow out teams. Sixth game comes. We're playing. Second half uh, comes. I'm out there on kickoff return. And what happens? I blow out my knee. I tear everything in my knee. Now, in that moment, I get into a depressed state because I, here, here I am. I've trained all summer for this moment because we were going to win the state championship. But, you know, sometimes it doesn't go the way that we want it to go. But the great thing about it is we continue to win. Next thing you know, we look up, we're 10-0. Not only are we 10-0, we're the number one team in the state. Not only are we the number one team in the state, we just found out that in all the history of Tullahoma High School, we are the winningest class in Tullahoma history. So you mean I play with all these All-Americans, All-State, 10-0, uh, number one in the state, and we're the winningest class? Man, I'm telling you, I don't know about you all, but anybody will want to be part of that team. Because not only were we winning, but we were like a brotherhood. We loved each other. We didn't care, as they would say, we didn't care what side of the tracks that you were raised on or grew up on. We don't care if you went to East, West, or whatever school. We just loved each other. We loved playing with one another. Well, here comes the playoffs. The playoffs come. We play against a team called Kenwood. Uh, some of y'all that are really fanatics, y'all would know about this game. We play against Kenwood. I mean, we're supposed to blow Kenwood out. That's what the newspaper says. That's what everybody says. We're the number one seed. They're like the fourth or fifth seed. We're supposed to blow them out. Well, it didn't go like that. It was a heavyweight fight. It was going back and forth. The, the game was so good that we went into overtime. And what I did not tell you was, if anybody's ever gone to any high school game, especially a Tullahoma high school game, there is nothing like running out of the locker room, seeing all those fans, seeing the band line up, they get into the T formation. Uh, T formation. They span out, we see the banner, and we run through that banner as they're playing our fight song. See, I'm an Alabama fan, so I'm not gonna tell you what our fight song is. But see, some of y'all know. We, and it, we run out, I'm telling you, I'm getting chills thinking about that feeling. I don't care if you're the star or you never play. There's nothing like the feeling of running through that T. Well, I went to my coach and I said, Coach, I know I, I've been rehabbing and I've been training. I mean, I've been rehabbing and I'm trying to get back, but I, I have a blown out knee. Can I just dress out one more time? Because I want to be out there with my brothers. I want to be out there and I want to run through that T one more time. He said, that's, that's fair. I want you to dress out. And, it, and not only that, it was senior night where your parents come down and, you know, they call your name out and everything. So here I am, hobbling, limping, got this big old brace on my knee, but I got to dress out one last time to run out on that tee, to run out through that tee. The band goes, we run through that tee, I'm in the back, and it just felt good to be out there one last time. So as this, the game begins, and as I told y'all, it was a heavyweight fight. We're going overtime. It comes down to a kick, to a field goal. If they miss the field goal, we go on and possibly go to the state championship. And if they uh, miss it, I mean, excuse me, if they make it, they go on possibly to the state championship. Well, I hear, Jermaine, Jermaine. That's my coach calling my name to run out there. 
hold up, I have this big brace on. I don't, I, I, I don't, I, I'm not even supposed to be out there. I'm not even supposed to be playing. So I grab my helmet. He tries to stop me. He stops me. I don't care. He tells me to get in. I run. I go out there. This big, I'm limping. And I hear the crowd cheering my name. Jermaine. They really wasn't. I'm lying. They really weren't cheering my name. That's just, made me feel good right there. You know how that feels, right? That made me, they really weren't cheering my name. But I run out there, right? And see, if anybody knows anything about football, my specialty was blocking field goals. I blocked that year six field goals to the point where I have the most blocked field goals in one season in Tullahoma history. Yeah, y'all can clap for that. Come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, all right, see, see that, that, that's the third rule from Baptist Church. You see, I made y'all clap, thank y'all. So here it is, my specialty is to block kicks. The crowd is up, the band is roaring. If they miss it, we win. If they make it, they win. I get on the right side, I'm, I'm about to come off the right side, this big bulk, bulky knee brace. Because that's my specialty, is to block the kicks. They snap the ball, I run, they miss the kick. I, the crowd goes crazy, the crowd goes wild. But hold up, there's a whistle. What's this whistle for? I look over, there's a yellow flag. What is this yellow flag for? The referee, the referee waving their hands. He talks to the, the, referee, uh, the umpire with the white hat, that's the head umpire. Next thing you know, offsides. Who, who? The referee comes, number five, that's what number I was. Number five, come here, come here. You were offsides by eight inches. Offsides? How dare you say I'm offsides by eight inches? In that moment, I realized something. Eight inches, I realized something. I ran out, on, I ran out there on the field, grabbed my helmet without stopping to the coach to ask him why he wanted me out there. Let me ask y'all a question. How many of y'all living your life running out there and not understanding your assignment? That wasn't my assignment to block the kick. My assignment was to be a decoy. And a lot of us are out of place because we don't understand our assignment in life. Just because God has given you a gift and given you a specialty for that gift doesn't mean it's meant for that to be happening in that season at that time. You have to know your assignment. Number two, when I, that's two amens. I'm almost about to wrap it up. But I told you I'm going to close three times. Number, number two, not only did I not know my assignment for a long time, one of my best friends in my life named Tim Delotta. He is one of my best friends. I used to blame him all the time because if you know Tim, he's 6263. I said, Tim, all you had to do was just jump and block it. That's all you had to do. We would have won. How many of y'all not only not know your assignments, but you don't want to own your own mistakes? A lot of times we, we can't move forward is because we want to blame everybody else and everything else for the situation that we're in. Instead of saying, it's my fault, I was off sides. But another thing I didn't tell you was the field goal kicker who kicked, I'll never forget her name. Her name was Jenny Cox. Yes, I said her name. It was a female kicker who beat us. Now, I just sit there and told you about all the great things that that 2000 team had. But do you not know that our legacy is the team who got beat by the, field goal, uh, the female field goal kicker? That is our legacy. That is our legacy. <laughs> oh, y'all the team who got beat by the, uh, the girl. <laughs> that is our, so I realized then, never underestimate the opposition no matter what you do. So as I'm wrapping up, I want to ask you, what in your life, what eight inches in your life that you have that you're not respecting? Because I didn't respect that they had a female field goal kicker. What eight inches in your life are you not willing to own? You keep blaming 
everybody else. You're in the predicament you're in because of you. It's easy to blame somebody else. Maybe it's not your season to be the cook, but just to be the server. Because maybe you need, to be, you need to learn how to serve before you can be in the kitchen. Or maybe it's not your season to be the server, but be the cook, because you have to know how to prepare something before you serve it. But too many times we feel like it's our time. But in that eight inches, I realized real quick that I have to know my assignment. Not only do I have to know my assignment, I gotta know if when I don't know my assignment and I'm out of place, not only will I affect me, I can affect a whole team. Not only when I'm out of place, I can affect a family. Not only when I'm out of place, I can affect a town. So I'm asking y'all today, are you out of place? Are you, are you ready and willing to own your own mistakes? Because I'm telling you, life will be better. And here's the fourth, the fourth, the fourth lesson I learned in this. That's my fourth close, okay? Just wanna let you know. I told you, I'm Southern Baptist. And I want everybody to understand this. Never, never, this is the most important. This is the most important, all right? I see you looking at me. I know you need to, you need to see, is that your wife right there? Okay, I want you to understand this. I know you, because you look seasoned just like you know. Never, ever, ever underestimate a woman. Thank you.